Thank you. Um, everybody, it's great to be here. Let me see if I can, is the slide up? Okay. So eight months ago, I posted an 11 minute short film called Kane's Arcade onto YouTube. And within a week, that movie had been transformed into a movement. It was literally launched a foundation to foster creativity and entrepreneurship in more kids. Um, I'm going to go back through my story and talk a little bit about how that happened. Um, it all started with a door handle. It was the last day of summer, and I have a 96 Corolla that's falling apart. <laughs> and I needed a new door handle for my car, so I went uh, over to Boyle Heights, which is in my neighborhood, an industrial part of Boyle Heights, where there's a lot of secondhand auto parts stores you can get. Uh, use glass, and I pulled into this random auto parts store, and I met this nine-year-old boy named Kane, who had built this elaborate cardboard arcade using boxes from his dad's store. And it was instantly uh, a mystery and amazing, and I was curious what it was, and he asked me if I'd like to play his arcade, and I said, well, how does it work? And he said, well, for one dollar, you get four turns, or for... <laughs> Or for $2, you can get a fun pass. <laughs> and you get 500 turns for a fun pass. <laughs> so I, I bought the fun pass. And I spent the next 40 minutes literally forgetting what I'd come there to do and playing Kane's games. There was uh, a little soccer game where you had to flick a paper ball past his army goalies. Um, there was a little uh, basketball game with a little uh, a little small little hoop that he'd won as a prize at Shakey's Pizza. And when you would score a point, he would crawl into the box and push out little tickets. If you've seen the film, you might remember the scene which we reenacted. But in real life, when that moment happened, uh, time stood still for me. And I was transported back to my own childhood when I was nine. And I was reminded why I started making films and creating in the first place. And that moment, I mean, I'm in the middle of my day running an errand. And I find myself back in my childhood. And it really inspired me to want to make a film that would share that sense of inspiration and imagination with more people. So I went home. I couldn't stop thinking about Kane's Arcade. I come back a few days later to talk to Kane's dad to see if I can make a short film about him. Um, and his dad had seen me on his security camera in the back <laughs> playing his son's games. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but Kane had never had a customer before. <laughs> I was Kane's first and only customer. And he had been working on this arcade all summer, and every day he would ask his dad's customers who would come in to buy an auto part if they would like to play his games, and, and nobody had stopped to play. And this broke my heart. Uh, so I hatched this plan to surprise Kane with lots of customers, right? And we organized a surprise flash mob as part of the making of documentary. Now here's where social media enters the picture. I wrote up a little invitation on Facebook. This was all like done in two days, okay? So I write up a little Facebook invite describing all the little things that I loved about Kane's arcade. And I mean, this kid, he had his own shirt that he made, right? It said Kane's arcade on the back, it said staff on the front, he'd wear it. <laughs> And he designed it himself. He was ready for customers. He had, <laughs> he had made a little, he'd taken paper brown bags, and he had cut out handles and written Kane's Arcade in case people won too many prizes and needed something to carry them home in. <laughs> and the prizes were all his own toys, little matchbox cars that he put in little boxes with display cases. He was ready for customers. So this Facebook invite, goes mini-viral, right? It, it gets shared by, a, I've just posted on my wall and a friend shares it, and soon uh, a Facebook page called Hidden LA shares it, and they have over 230,000 fans. Uh, within an hour of that, NBC News truck was at his arcade. <laughs> Fortunately, Kane wasn't there because it would have ruined the surprise. Uh, and then I posted the, the, the invitation on Reddit, and it hit the front page of Reddit, which is comparable to being on the front page of the internet, and all of a sudden, there's tens of thousands of people rooting for Kane, right? He gets 500 fans on his Facebook page. And a lot of people are paying attention. So the day comes. It's October 2nd, 2011. And 
George, Cain's dad, takes Cain to Shakey's Pizza for lunch. And when he's gone, hundreds of people show up. And we start making signs for Cain's arcade. And when Cain comes back in the car, there's hundreds of people cheering, we came to play. <laughs> and it's the look on his face. It's the biggest smile I've ever seen. And we captured it on film, and it became the heart of the story and a big reason why the film became so viral. So the film was posted on uh, April 9th. I remember because it was the day after my birthday. I was turning 37 on April 8th. And I promised myself for my birthday I was going to finish this film. Uh, so I spent my birthday editing. And uh, I posted the film the next day, and it went viral, immediately receiving over a million views the first day. Now, things happened so fast, I kind of want to slow things down and talk about those first three days leading up to what happened next. Um, a lot of my time was spent listening to what people were saying about the film and then improvising responses. Uh, so I'll give an example. When I posted the film, uh, we had a goal of raising a $25,000 scholarship fund for Kane. I made just a little WordPress page and a PayPal button. And I said, imagine what this kid could build with an engineering degree. So within the first day, we raised over $60,000 for Kane's scholarship fund. <laughs> and we raised the goal to $100,000 because by the time Kane's ready for college, you know, maybe that'll help with a semester. <laughs> within 24 hours, we raised over $110,000. Now, what do you do next? Do you raise the goal again? Uh, do you slow down? We decided to slow down because we weren't sure what we were doing at this point. This is literally two days after posting this film. Uh, and there was just so much happening. The, the response in the media, it, was, uh, it hit the, the, the front page of Yahoo. Uh, it was trending worldwide on Twitter. Uh, Justin Timberlake was tweeting it out and calling Kane the entrepreneur of the year. And the response was overwhelmingly positive. I mean, I, I spent, literally, I could not sleep for the first two days. That's one of the things you do when you have a viral moment. You don't sleep. And you're trying to read the internet, because when will this ever happen again? Uh, the responses were just incredible. They, they, the comments were nostalgic. It was bringing adults back to their childhood. Uh, and there were response videos of grown men crying. And that was incredibly moving. And more magical to me was the response of kids. Now, in one day, Kane went from 500 Facebook fans to over 120,000 Facebook fans. Uh, the film had an estimated 120, medium, 120 million media impressions in, in the first few days. And we started getting pictures like this posted on the Facebook wall. Now, this is a five-year-old uh, Quinn who started Quinn's Arcade in her kitchen and made her own t-shirt and was now just waiting for customers. And <laughs> her mom was just trying to figure out how to get some people into her kitchen. Now, this scene was being repeated all over the world in driveways, in parks, in, in living rooms, in classrooms. And kids were using their arcades to raise money for different causes, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Children's Cancer Research, Foster Kids, uh, even Kane's Scholarship Fund. It was truly, truly <laughs> inspiring. It's so just some of this kid made a pinball machine. It was pretty amazing. So all this was happening, and the question was, what, what do you do next? There was all this potential. You could feel it. Something magical was happening. Uh, and I hadn't slept for two days. <laughs> So uh, I wrote uh, a little mission statement on a napkin. And the idea was to try to help more kids. And the mission I wrote was to find, foster, and fund creativity and entrepreneurship in more kids like Kane. So with that, we started uh, the Imagination Foundation. And it just had this mission statement at the time. And started reaching out to funders, uh, different people who we've been having conversations with. Do you go to a corporate funder? Do you go to? an individual, a nonprofit, where do you go? Um, and I was having a conversation with the president of the Goldhurst Foundation, who said to me, 
you're starting at the destination. There are so many organizations out there trying to figure out how to scale things like project-based learning, and this is happening magically through the power of storytelling. So with that promise, the Goldhurst Foundation put up a $250,000 matching challenge grant to the public donations being given to Kane Scholarship Fund. And at this point, we raised the goal from $100,000 to $250,000 with this explanation that now when you give a dollar to Kane Scholarship Fund, you're also giving a dollar for us to launch a foundation that will help more kids. So things started to make sense. Now, within five days, Kane Scholarship Fund was at $152,000, and there was a spontaneous block party. We didn't do a flash mob for this. Thousands of people showed up on the first Saturday. It was open, and of course, we gave him his scholarship fund to date with a giant cardboard check. <laughs> now, Kane is now, to date, it's at $220,000 and counting. And there was a line for five hours, it was a five hour line around the block to play Kane's Arcade. <laughs> Parents were showing up saying that their kids wanted to skip Disneyland and come there to buy a fun pass and the parents could have been happier about that. <laughs> and yes, the fun pass is still $2. Though he did make a fast track fun pass for $25 so you could skip the lines. <laughs> And he has his own billboard, right? <laughs> so this project uh, transformed Kane's life. Uh, when I met Kane, I asked him what he wanted to be. He said he wanted to be a, a SWAT member when he grew up. After this happened, he said he wanted to be an engineer and a game designer. So that was transformative to me, and it showed how a small gesture can change the life of a child. So with the Imagination Foundation, the first thing we did was this was in April. We launched a school pilot program. And in the first two months, over 100 schools in nine countries used the short film to teach kids math, science, and engineering. And they weren't just using the film. They were creating curriculum, which we set up a wiki and a Facebook group. And the teachers were sharing their activity kits and then adding extension activities. It was really amazing. And then the second initiative we did was the Global Cardboard Challenge. It was on October 6th of 2012 which was the one year anniversary of the flash mob where people came out to make Cane's Day. One year later, we invited people around the world to register an event and build anything they could imagine using cardboard and their creativity. And in three weeks, we, we, I made a, a follow-up film, which you can see, Cane's Arcade 2. Uh, and within three weeks of that film launching, we had over 270 cardboard challenge events in 40 countries on six continents around the world. Tens of thousands of participants, kids playing, making, uh, and these events raised tens of thousands of dollars for different causes. Now this will become an annual event once a year where people in their community can come out and celebrate the creativity and imagination of kids everywhere. So that happened. <laughs> And in Los Angeles, we had a, a really great event where Kane um, got to, you know, the mayor came out and Kane got to add the mayor to his staff. <laughs> he was also given a cardboard key to the city. <laughs> so what did I learn from this, right? What can I, what are the, what's the big takeaway for me? Um, I learned a lot of things. Uh, you know, I asked Kane what he learned about this when we, were, we went to France, and Kane was the youngest ever speaker at the Con Lion International Festival of Creativity. He was also the youngest ever entrepreneur to speak at the USC Marshall School of Business. And I asked Kane what he learned from this, and he wrote five lessons on a barf bag. <laughs> That's what we had, we were on a plane. So uh, one of Kane's biggest lessons was to start a business that is fun, to never give up, to use recycled stuff. <laughs> Those were Kane's lessons. Um, what I would like to suggest is that much like a cardboard box, which in the hands of a child can be transformed into a robot, a rocket ship, or an arcade, so too can any moment be transformed into an opportunity to change the life of a child or to come up with the next big idea. Sometimes all it takes is a little imagination. And these moments can happen when you least expect them. Often, the smallest moments 
can turn into the biggest opportunities. Thanks.